A folding and adjustable stock for the FDL3? Oh, hell yeah. What's going on, guys? So in this video, I wanna show you this stock that I found. It was, uh, uh, this is not my design. This was designed by uh, a Mr. Eric Cedarberger. I'm sorry if I screwed up the name. Um, I'll, I'll throw a link to his site where you can uh, download the STL files for this. But uh, I wanted to share it with you because I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, it's, it's fairly well built. It's 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 well designed. Um, there's only a couple of changes that I personally would make to it. And I haven't figured out yet how I want to make those design changes, but I'm pretty sure this guy's probably already on it. Yeah. So this consists of eight parts. Um, you've got the the actual stock part. You've got a uh, a butt plate here, and these are screwed in. There's a screw here, and there's another screw here. You've got the top cover and you've got the pin to hold adjustment and then you've got this this here is four different parts i've gone and put this together already so when i printed this thing out i, I very quickly realized that i wanted to share it with you guys because I, I like the way it's designed um it's there's a lot of parts that are well thought out uh there's a couple of changes that i'll make and i'll get into that a little bit later but i just i i wanted to show you the completion of the process putting this together because there's uh some heat set inserts that go into this uh and all the holes instead of threading in the plastic he had done with that and i'm kind of on the fence as to how i feel about those but so if you look at the bottom here we've got three these are m5 screws these are m5 by 40 millimeter and there's three of them and then the heat inserts that i would use uh, are these guys here so i use the m5 i believe i use these short ones here is that right? No, these these guys here, this is what they use. And I'm not too fond of this style. Uh, as you can see, these are like the cheaper ones. Um, I like these better. As you can see, the, the cross hatching kind of grabs on and bites a little bit more. But, um, you know, that's that is what it is. So I, there's there's three of those. And again, these are M5 by 40 millimeter because they go all the way from here. Um, and then that's just the hinge and then the latch. Um, so there's that. And then we've got the pin for the adjustability to lock it in place. And I still need to find a cotter pin or something to place in there. So when I find that, I will let you know. That'll be later in the video. And so here's what's left for me to do with this. I got to uh, put a couple of inserts here. So we can place this on here, just like that. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got my soldering iron I'm gonna do this with. This is the FM2027 and I've got the T15 ILS. This is a uh, just a small comical tip. And the ones I'm gonna use, if you're gonna use the same kit, I'll put the links below. Um, it is, I'm gonna be using this, the M3. 0.5 overall length, 2.94. Uh, these are the, the small ones here. And we're gonna put four into this. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, my soldering iron, for those of you who are interested, uh, is set to 400 degrees C. And that is, uh, I believe 750 uh, Fahrenheit. So we're gonna place these right here. And I don't see really a front and a back on these. So I'm um, not gonna worry too much about it. So I'm just gonna put the soldering iron straight through and I'm just gonna push till these are flush. Okay, there's one. And this um, PETG stinks. Whew. This is probably not good to breathe in. All right, there's two. 
and flip it over and deal with the last two. Yeah, so I'm gonna let those sit for a little while to solidify um, that, that brass stays hot for a while. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is head over to here and then we've got these four here that we need to do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna latch this in place just like that. All right, so um, the FDL uses these, uh, this is a number six by 32 uh, by half inch screw. Um, I don't have any more of these and I definitely don't have the heat cert, uh, inserts in American. So we're gonna use um, the metric and that obviously you've already noticed that for these. So uh, it is what it is. Uh, the good news is if you wanted to change it back or whatever, if you are in the same position as me, you just print out this part and replace it. So there is that. Uh, if you have the uh, American size, then go with that. So let's go ahead and sink these. And these, they kind of do and don't have a front and a back. I'm going to use the same T15 ILS. We're going to sink this guy. And these are a little bit larger, so they're going to take a little bit longer to set. Um, Okay, so there is that. Now, uh, you'll see that the plastic kind of comes up around these. It's up to you if you want to cut that off or not. I'm going to leave it for now and see if it's an issue. So, these should be set for now. Let's go ahead and install those. I'm going to use an M3, I believe an M3 by 6. We'll try that. And these are uh, button head screws. That turn with a, this is a two millimeter Allen key. Uh, if you're interested in these, these are about the best freaking Allen keys I've ever found. Uh, I made a video for it, put the link there. So to do this, uh, you got this little hogged out section here. You wanna flip that towards the front cause that's gonna coincide with this guy here. So you can see, very self-explanatory. Now we're gonna take our screw and start it in the back. And don't go too tight with these because reasons. Yeah, I don't know, uh, these these heat insets, um, I don't know how much pull strength uh, they'll allow for if you go cranking these in there. So just don't crank them in there, I think. Just snug. Uh, the other issue is these holes are so close to the edge of the plastic, um, it, it might crack if you, uh, just crank them. So as as I spoke, there there'd be a few changes that if I made this, I would make. Um, I guess I guess I could modify them if I wanted to. But uh, the first change I would make is uh, I would try to find a way to get more meat under this uh, screw hole here so that when you are screwing this in position, it's not going to strip out. Okay, and I think, speaking of stripping out, um, this last one, with these heat I I insets, um, sometimes they get a little pushed one way or the other, and I'm not sure if this one's going to strip out or not. 
And it's only brass, so it will strip out pretty easily. I'm gonna give it a try, I guess. Yeah, I think that's definitely stripping out. One time deal here, guys. No. Oh. Uh, maybe, maybe. I'll tell you in the next couple cranks. No, it's good. Cool. Okay. So there's that mounted. Uh, I wish my ESUN PETG matched my, uh, this is um, Saint Star TPU in gray. As you can see, this got kind of a bluer tone to it than this. Um, so yeah, it's whatever it is. So now this guy fits right in here. You can see there's a little cutout there and that coincides with that little cutout there. And that just slides right in place like that. And then if you wanna adjust this to wherever you want, you put the pin, now it's locked in place. And like I said, we need to find a cotter pin or something for that. But let's get this installed on the FDL first before we do that. Okay, so what we wanna do here is we wanna remove these two screws here. There's one here and there's one here. And then there's one here and one here. And then this back piece should come right out. So let's do that. Uh, also, these are two different size screws. You've got the, uh, one's a half inch, and I'll let you know what the other size is as soon as I see it. Okay, so the top one is a half inch. That's a six by 32. And this bottom one is, I believe, uh, three eighths. Okay, so we're gonna take this guy and just place it right in here. Uh, it might be, it might be a good idea if you want to run your screws into these quick. A lot of times, the plastic will kind of melt its way inside of the heat inset. So if you run the screw in there quick. Uh, it will clean out the threads. So after you're done doing that, go ahead and put this guy in its place. And again, we want the longer screws on the bottom. I'm sorry. Okay, so once you get this guy in place, you want the longer screws on the top. And again, these are gonna be our 12 millimeter, and I might even change these to an eight millimeter. Um, I'll see in a moment. Nah, we're going to leave them as a 12 millimeter. Okay, so I just go ahead and crank those guys down. We're going to put the 8 millimeter on the bottom. Just like that. And in a perfect world, um, if I had more of the uh, American style screws, the American thread, I would... Uh, use those and the heat sets but um, much the same way as the design it it was created that way so uh, I followed his quick little write-up as to what screws he used and what heat insets he used so here we are uh, so in the future I might reprint this or these small parts to uh, match the same screws of the FDL. Okay. And you might have to kind of press this in place. Um, I need to press it like kind of this way to get these screws to line up. And there we go. Tightening down. And one more. Right there. Um, what's nice about this black oxide screw, you really can't tell much of a difference between the front and the back screws. So, um, not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, let's crank that guy down a little bit. Perfect. 
Okay, there we go. Now what we're gonna do is take this guy, slide it on, just like that. Whoa. Okay, so number two thing I would do different, and I might even go ahead and do it, um, this cross hatching here, I would like it to match this. Um, so I don't know if that's a, if this matters, if, if Project FDL has this licensed or whatever, uh, and that might be why he didn't do it. Um, Cause it's just, it seems like a, uh, uh, the logical thing to do for that. So there's, there's that. Um, let's flip this guy over and check out this side. And this looks awesome. Absolutely awesome. So now this, this clip here um, is fairly hard to do. Uh, I think I would make a, just like a notch or something to make that a little easier to unclip. I mean, it's got the, it's, it's got a place where you can get your fingers into, but I feel like it should be more. And then the other thing that I would do is this is kind of floppy. And I guess you can really tighten these guys down. Um, I gotta get my Allen, Allen wrench set out for that. But, uh, you know, if you tighten those down, I think it'll stay a little bit better. Let me get that. Uh, what I think I will do is remodel these if he's not already working on it to include, I think like a magnet or something, uh, embed one here and embed one in the side plate. So when you do that, it um, it will clip together. And obviously that's, you're not gonna be able to embed it. You'll have to ramp something up to make it happen. But yeah, this guy just kind of flips out, locks in place like that and is adjustable like that. Uh, so the other issue that I see is if we do put a magnet, um, there's gonna have to be multiple magnets or like an elongated piece of metal somehow put into this. So uh, I, can, I can understand why that's not done yet. As you can see, if you put say a magnet here to there, um, and then you have this thing fully extended, your magnet's way out here. So uh, there's gotta be a solution. I don't yet know what it is. Let's see. Um, you know, it doesn't, it's not gonna stay. So there's that. Okay, so let's pull this guy off. All right, so let me find a, something to lock that off. Okay, so I went through my boxes and I found this guy. This is what's called a hitch pin. And if I grab you a measurement on this guy here, um, this is going to be, the wire itself is 1.86 millimeter. And the overall length is, Right around 41.8. So let me change this to inches, seeing as that we're all screwed up with inches here. So the wire is 0.625, and the overall length is uh, 1.63. Oops. Let's get that. There we go. 1.48. Okay, so that's gonna work fairly well. And this guy's just gonna flip right in there. Just like that. I, I'm not gonna say this is the solution, but I think it's a good solution. So we place our pin through there, come over here. And then this guy, we're gonna slide right through there, just like that. Okay. Um, and again, there's there's probably better solutions, but that's the one I have available to me. And the nice thing about it is the way this is cut, um, there's a 
a beveled section that this fits into. So you're not gonna get caught on anything with it like that. And now when it's turned away from you, you're not gonna get caught on anything close to you uh, on this side. So it's a, a good way to put that pin. And then now to change it, just pull the pin, pull this out, slide it to where you want, put that back in, and then slide our pin in. And you didn't see any of that, sorry. Okay, so I think that's that's a pretty good solution. So that's a look at the folding and adjustable stock that uh, Eric Cedarberg has designed. Uh, and again, if I botched the name, I apologize. Uh, link for it is in the description below. He is kind enough to allow us to have the files to print our own. Um, and again, I, I have already mentioned some of the changes that I would make, but the one that really sticks out to me is I would like to have the same screws match front and back. So now, uh, I need not just a screwdriver, but I need an Allen key. I need another Allen key. So I need a two, a two. So now I need a two millimeter Allen key, a three millimeter Allen key, a 2.5 millimeter Allen key, and a number one Phillips. Um, so yeah, I would just like some uh, similarities between all the screws so I'm not having to carry multiple screws just to change this or change that um, and this does seem fairly robust I printed this uh, at an Esun PETG I used a 20% infill and maybe maybe 30% would be better for this guy here um, I mean it's, it's squeaky but it doesn't seem like anything is going to break or come apart um but yeah i got excited by this guy um i like the fact that it's foldable and the other thing is i there needs to be some kind of a solution to hold this here uh better uh than than nothing at all um but you know it is what it is for now i i mean i guess you could tighten these up even more than they are um because you're not you're not gonna pull these through. They they pull into the part rather than out. Like if you were to tighten these ones too much, these would pull the the heat set out. Whereas these ones squish it. So I don't know. There's that. Uh, so just a, a final note. This is being uh, recorded on the 28th. Uh, my microview has it, it's still in limbo. Um, I have not heard anything from SparkFun. They should have had it now for probably on the order of a week or two. Um, and yeah, so I haven't got any correspondence on that. I don't know if they're busy or they're just gonna fix it and ship it back. I don't know what the deal is, but um, it's I have no updates on that. So this guy is still not working. Uh, the, the story with the the microview is I put it in here, but it gave me a black screen. This did function. Everything worked besides the screen. So any adjustments that you would make, you I mean you would hear you would hear the thing working, you just couldn't see it working. So to me that was not working. So uh, just waiting on them to replace it and get it back to me. Um, I would have ordered another one, but they wanted the linker back too, and I'm not going to order a second linker. So I can get this guy done. Um, I will order more microviews, but again, I want to make sure that the microview is a problem and not the, the linker. So, uh, or the USB programmer rather. So, uh, yeah, that's that's that. Uh, I will keep you guys up to date as I know with whatever's going on. So that's the stock attached. I am excited about that. It looks great. It's functional. Um, it does squeak a little bit. But uh, I don't really foresee too many problems with it. Uh, I mean, I guess if you took a fall, it might break some of this plastic in here. But um, so far, looks good. Uh, we'll we'll have to see how it holds up in the long run. But yeah, definitely excited about it. So Eric, special thanks, man. Um, thanks for thanks for making this, and thanks for sharing it with us, uh, the general public. So quite awesome of you. And with that, uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed seeing this, go ahead and click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't done it already, like 
I think like 85% of you have not, go ahead and punch that subscribe button because you only get to do it once and it's fun and I'll catch you later. Peace.